Not long after she expanded her joints, she joined the social cycle of high-profile women, made new friends, and her pride grew even bigger. Soon, she became ashamed of her husband. She considered him not fit to be called hers. She belittled and called her husband of Fordile all sorts of demeaning names at every opportunity she got, and their marriage soon became a battleground. Once upon a time, there lived a girl named Ogedo. Ogedo was a beautiful and energetic girl, raised by her aged father Amalo, who was a hard-working palm wine tapper in their village. Ogedo's mother died after giving birth to her and Amalo decided not to remarry. He lived in a small hut alone with his daughter Ogedo, whom he cared so much for. One fateful day, Amalo went on his daily tax, which was tapping wine from the palm trees. And while he was climbing the towering palm tree, he lost his footing and fell from a great height and landed his head against a stone and died. When the news of his demise got to his daughter Ogedo, she was heartbroken. Her dream of a secured future was shattered. She wept uncontrollably. The villagers who were in their house at the time the news was delivered to her tried their best consoling her. As she mourned the loss of her beloved and respected father, she knew she had to be strong to be able to fend for herself. After Amalo's funeral, Ogedo started selling African salad, known as abacha, in her community, which she made and took to a neighboring village to sell. One day, while she was selling her abacha, she met a young, vibrant man named Ofodile. Ofodile was a blacksmith in the village where Ogedo sold her abacha and had come to the market that day to purchase materials for his forge. Ofodile bought a plate of African salad from Ogedo, ate and praised her cooking skills. He told her that the abacha was the best he had ever tested and wished he could have it often. Ogedo smiled and told him that she always came to the market to sell her abacha every Eke market day. Ofodile was happy to hear that as he always came to the market on a day to buy the things he used for his forged tools. He told her that he would eat her abacha on every Eke day. Ogedo was so happy to have gained a satisfied customer. Ofodile got home and could not get his encounter with Ogedo off his mind. The next Eke day, he went to the market and again enjoyed Ogido's delicious abacha. This continued and he decided to make Ogido his wife since they were both single. Unlike the typical image of a blacksmith, Ofodile was not only skilled in his craft but also exceptionally wealthy. He produced the best weapons and tools in the region and attracted customers who traveled miles to get to his forge. Ofodile married Ogedo and she bore him three children, two boys and one girl. Time passed and Ofodile opened a bacha joint for her. In the joint, Ogadi sold her special abacha, nkwobi and fresh palm wine. Though the joint was small but it was situated in a lively neighborhood where it attracted villagers and strangers alike. Happy customers called her by the name Madame Ogedo, the exceptional cook. One day, while Ofodile was coming back from the market, he had an accident and sustained major injuries that led to the amputation of his arms. Ofodile, having no arm, could no longer do anything in his forge, and so the family depended fully on Ogedo's business. Months passed and Ogedo's joints became the talk of the town. 
Her special abacha was featured in local newspapers and on social media, and celebrities began to visit. Customers lined up outside her shop, eager to test her delicacies. Ogido's pride grew alongside her success. She enjoyed the praises showered on her by her customers. As she continued to work hard, she made profits, which were far more than she had ever imagined, and then expanded her joints. Not long after she expanded her joint, she joined the social cycle of high-profile women, made new friends, and her pride grew even bigger. Soon, she became ashamed of her husband. She considered him not fit to be called hers. She belittled and called her husband of Fordile all sorts of demeaning names at every opportunity she got, and their marriage soon became a battleground. Whenever they attended a function, she would mock his disability in front of their friends. She made sure she diminished his self-worth. Ogido's first son and only daughter never supported their mother's bad behavior towards their father. They complained about it almost all the time, but her second son never saw any wrong in their mother's behavior. Nothing mattered to Ogedo more than money, and as her children grew older, she preached the gospel of wealth to them and warned them not to be a liability like their father. She urged them to go out, make money, and secure their place in the society. As for her only daughter, Awele, she wanted her to marry a wealthy man. She believed that wealth was the key to a happy and secure life, and those were her wish for her daughter. Awele was a beautiful, kind-hearted girl who took after her father's kind nature. She does not like a loud life just like her father. Everyone in the village admired her, and soon, suitors began to call at their door. First came Chijoke, a kind-hearted shoemaker, and Ogido dismissed him immediately. She told him he would never be more than a shoemaker. Next was Emeka, a gentle school teacher. Ogido saw no future in his profession and sent him away, saying that a teacher's salary won't be able to keep her daughter comfortable. One by one, the suitors came and went, each driven away. Ogido made it clear that her daughter would only marry a wealthy man. Ogido's bad behaviors continued and her husband wondered how the woman he married had turned into a person of a questionable character. Ofodile never knew that her obsession with wealth started in her youth. Despite the fact that she had grown up in poverty and had struggled through many hardships, Though Awele was respectful of her mother's wishes, but she sometimes felt disheartened. She saw goodness in some of the men who came to marry her, and she wanted a love based on mutual respect and affection rather than material wealth. One day, a dossier, a wealthy businessman in a nearby city on the outskirts of the village, who happened to be a regular customer at Madame Ogido's joint, came and asked for Awele's hand in marriage. A dossier, aside being wealthy, was equally good-looking with a great sense of humor. Ofodile and his daughter Awele saw him and liked him, but they would not accept his proposal until they've known about his personal life. Madame Ogido was so much in a hurry to get her daughter married off to a dossier, even without getting to know his true source of income. Despite of Fordile's reservations, his wife Ogedo pushed for Awele to be married off to Edoze. After going back and forth, Ofodile consented to the marriage since his daughter liked the man. Edoze married Awele and she moved into his mansion in the city. At first, Awele's new life seemed like a dream come true. She was provided with the best of everything. However, things went south when Edoche's behavior changed drastically. 
He became controlling and secretive. Awele wondered what he was hiding and then monitored his activities and discovered that his wealth came from unruly activities, which included kidnapping for ransom. One night, while Edoze was away on a business trip, Awele found a hidden room in the mansion filled with evidence of Edoze's crimes. She saw images of children and adults who had been kidnapped, their eyes pleading for rescue. Awele told her father about Edoze's activities and they both planned a getaway. With her father's support, she contacted the authorities without Edoze's knowledge, providing them with enough evidence to warrant a raid on the mansion. On the day of the raid, Edozi was arrested and his mansion demolished. When the news got to Madame Ogedo, she was filled with guilt for pushing her only daughter into the marriage. She apologized to her husband and children and vowed to support them unconditionally from that day forward. Ogedo cut down on friends and focused more on her relationship with her family especially her husband, who had contributed immensely to the growth of her business. She went back to being a loving, caring, and submissive wife to Ofodile. Weeks turned into months and Ogido, in a bid to rebuild her husband's confidence, started bringing him to her joint to sit and catch some fun. Time passed and her male children all prospered in their respective field of endeavor and her daughter Awele found love again, and this time in the arms of a wealthy man who made his wealth through a reputable means.